Okay. Uh, are you seeing my screen okay, Claire? Yeah, yeah, I am. Okay, over to you. Ready to go. Right. Enjoy the session, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Claire Collett. I'm an occupational therapist and um, I work for Dorset Council's technology enabled care team. Um, so the uh, session today is current and future opportunities of assistive technology and the aims of um, the session is to give you an overview of what our current provision of technology in Dorset is. Then we're going to sort of go through the role of perhaps what I might do as an occupational therapist who works in technology and show you some of the projects we you know I'm currently working on and then we're going to look at some future innovation and, and opportunities and that that is really with a particular focus on prevention. So next slide please. So our current provision at the moment is with um, our new care technology partner who is Argenti and they are from PA Consulting and they provide our um, provision of technology in terms of care lines and um, some standalone equipment. Their main focus for us in the council is helping to manage residents' risks uh, out there, meeting their outcomes, improving their independence, supporting carers and hoping um, they will help avoid or reduce more expensive care interventions for us. Next slide, please. So really, if we drill down into the focus areas, um, managing risk might mean somebody who maybe is an, unaware of a risk to themselves. So that might be perhaps that they have dementia and they might not realise, say, if a smoke alarm's going off and um, they need that smoke alarm to be linked to a 24 hour uh, monitoring centre. Um, meeting outcomes, really this is around um, re reducing risks, ensuring that um, people are safe and uh, improving independence is um, perhaps enabling that individual to learn new or in increase their existing skills. A lot of the work is supporting carers um, who look after people and this might be so that they can provide reassurance and peace of mind that that technology does that. Avoiding or reducing care um, is, is quite important to the council because we want to use technology really to prevent those more traditional care interventions um, coming into play. Next slide, please. So here's some examples briefly of some, some technology that's being provided by um, our care technology partner, Argenti and their installer. And these are very um, traditional things, some of them, um, some of them a bit newer, um, but they're all there to design, design to help people perhaps take medication more easily, perhaps manage or um, detect seizures if they have epilepsy, um, and perhaps, you know, look at their people with memory problems. So next slide, please. I think it helps sometimes to look at a case study um, that really might embed how, how sometimes even the basic technology can help people. So um, Kerry is a vulnerable lady who um, lives on her own. She has cerebral palsy, uh, she's a wheelchair user and um, a, she has a learning disability and um, she has a direct payment from us and uses that to um, employ um, so a, a personal assistance. So having that care line really has, um, we, we sort of followed up with, with Kerry and she said that actually it increased her independence and confidence. And, and before the care line was in, she, she felt quite unsafe. And I think particularly during um, whoop, the the slides <laughs> sorry out oh, there we are um particularly during this you know the covid time um sometimes having that access to that 24-hour helpline really Im improved her independence and she knew that it was there 24 hours a day so it's a basic um user example but actually sometimes you know that that's all that people need next slide please So I think a lot of people might be saying, well, why should OTs be involved with um, technology really? So um, in, in my role, I work with another colleague and there's just two of us as tech OTs and we work with our principal occupational therapist, who's our strategic lead. But we really look at aligning um, the use of technology provision with the council's strategic intentions and the many programmes of transformation that we have. And you'll hear about one coming up soon. 
Um, we are there to advise and support all the frontline staff um, to understand how technology can support their, their people that they're seeing in a personalised and a strength-based way. And we're there to help educate and raise awareness of technology throughout the council. And we're also looking at how people could perhaps self-fund their own technology. We also work with many staff on the front line to look at very complex cases so we can help them achieve better outcomes um, and, you know, look at what, what potential savings there could be, but obviously ensuring that all risks are minimised. Next slide, please. So I think if, if people aren't familiar with um, occupational therapy, really, it's about supporting people and empowering them. Um, a lot of what we do is facilitating recovery, building resilience and helping people overcome barriers that might prevent them from doing what they really want to do, what matters to them. So occupation can mean many things. It, it's not just perhaps you might think it's a job. It means um, anything practical that that person has to do or any activities or hobbies that they want. So really, that's where we look at increasing people's independence and well-being in any area that's important to them. Next slide, please. Again, as an OT, we look at the person, their environment and that occupation and how it's affecting them. So we feel, you know, that as tech OTs, really, it can work or um, alongside solutions to daily living dif difficulties. And that's a primary focus for occupational therapists who are looking at how the person can be supported with their daily living tasks. Next slide, please. So um, drilling down into a little bit more of assistive technology, Paul Burstow is um, the president of the Technology Enabled Care Services Association, and he's um, very pro occupational therapy and said that we've always made good use of technology in our practice. And that's true. I've worked in technology since um, 2008 and um, the use of technology really should focus on what matters to the person, not what the mat what, not what is the matter with them. And I think that's what we I said in the previous slide that we've always practiced that way. And cer certainly, you know, during the COVID times, um, occupational therapists have in, in really embraced digital um, technology and we've had to look at re recommending apps for people. We've um, used technology to deliver interventions such as virtual therapeutic groups and some occupational therapists up and down the country have been looking at those everyday technologies such as Alexa and that helps them support what we call participation in daily life. Next slide, please. So one of the current projects um, I've been involved with is our tech lounge. Um, next slide, please. The tech lounge really was set up in our county hall building, and that's a collaboration between adults and children's social care and our lovely digital team setting up this festival. Um, the emphasis is on technology that can help people remain independent in their own home, but also signposting those who wish to self-purchase that their own smart technology. So we've got lots of things um, in the lounge. And um, if we go on to the next slide, we'll show you our new promotional video, which unfortunately you'll see a little bit more of me in. <laughs> Sorry about that. The purpose of the lounge was to gather in one place a range of the latest digital devices and technology for our adults and children, social care staff and the general public to be able to come here and try out the products to see what helps them in a comfortable and welcoming environment. Our aim is to assist the public and their families to make informed and impartial decisions about purchasing their own smart technology as it has enormous opportunities to promote their independence and improve their health and well-being. The Tech Lounge will be used to showcase a variety of technology and enable people to visit, relax and receive information and live demonstrations of the very latest products and devices before they make any financial commitments. Throughout this video you'll see a range of different devices and if you're interested in finding out more information and you have a smartphone, all you have to do is scan the QR code. The Comp is a device which can help someone who has limited digital skills to communicate with their friends and family. So it's been designed for someone who's um, 
older who may be feeling a bit socially isolated and maybe they're not really able to use modern technology such as a smartphone or a computer. Essentially, it's a, a device that you turn on with one button and uh, every day someone can have a message from their children or grandchildren. They could have a photo sent through to them, um, even have a video call to see how they're doing. It doesn't need any usernames or passwords and it can be left on all the time. The Kamuri Sense Socket is an activity monitoring system. It essentially sits on the worktop in the kitchen and you have either a kettle, a toaster or a microwave plugged into it. And it's learning this person's pattern, their routine. So if they always get up at set time in the morning, maybe have a cup of tea, make their breakfast, it learns that. So after a while, if that was to change, it will start sending alerts um, via a text or an email to a family member or maybe a carer. It's a really good device for helping monitor your loved ones um, because it can pick up things like um, something's happening to your loved one. So it can really prevent something happening and it can enable them to stay in their home longer. It's also got a motion sensor and a temperature sensor in it as well. It would just tell us if someone's coming into the kitchen, but also if the temperature got too high in the kitchen, maybe um, your loved one's left um, their, the, the cooker on, uh, it would actually send an alert to let somebody know that the, the heat is, is building up. So the socket is a very discreet way of monitoring someone's activity and if you're worried about your loved one it can help you reassure you that they're still maintaining their independence at home. So there are many different GPS trackers on the market today and each one has different elements of how they can support people. Here we have a range of GPS trackers that can be worn um, on the wrist, around the neck, maybe placed in a coat pocket or even wearing your shoes. Some of the devices have built-in fall detection. Some of them allow to, to phone the wearer and some of them allow the person to use an SOS button to, to call out. Some of them can be connected direct to a loved one or perhaps go to a 24-hour monitoring care line centre as well. All of these devices can have what we call a geofence or a geozone set up on them, which is a virtual area. So when someone physically crosses that area, it will send an alert to their family or their friends. That could be a text or an email, or maybe it could go through to the 24 hour monitoring center as well. These devices are really useful for people who are struggling with memory loss. Maybe they have dementia. Uh, and they can really help um, someone to be able to go out and about and be independent but can reassure loved ones that they can be found if they get a bit lost. So the AV1 is an avatar for children who can't attend school physically. It enables them to continue accessing their learning and their education. The avatar sits in the classroom and the child sits at home and they can access all the things that they would do in class. So they can speak to their friends, they can speak to their teacher, they can take part in the lesson. Here we have some bubbles that actually is really good to help a child. It can help with their sensory stimulation um, and maybe if they're feeling distressed, it could help calm them down. We've connected our bubbles to a smart plug and a smart speaker. So you can ask it to turn the bubbles on. So the own phone is essentially a mobile phone, but without smartphone features. It allows a child to communicate with their friends or family. It's really easy to use and it can come in a variety of designs. So the Amazon Echo Show is actually a smart speaker with a screen. It's really good for what we call smart home automation. So it can actually open your blinds. It could open curtains. It can connect to um, smart plugs, it could turn your lights on and off. It's really beneficial for many people, but particularly for people with physical disabilities. Another element of smart home automation we have here is the smart door lock. This is a wireless door lock and it can be controlled by your phone via an app. It can unlock or lock your door. This is particularly useful for someone who's unable to get to the door in time or maybe would need to let carers in. It can be used by somebody in their home or it could be used remotely by a family member. 
So if this was combined with the ring doorbell, it could allow the family to see who's at the door and then enable access to that visitor. So the ring cam could be particularly useful for carers who might need to leave their loved one at home. Maybe they need to pop to the shops or maybe they're at work during the day and they just want to check in on their loved one. You can even have a two-way conversation with the person at home. These products were initially devised with security in mind for us in our homes, but they have so many more potential uses and we hope that we've shown you some of those today. We hope you've enjoyed this insight into our tech lounge so far, but there are many more devices for you to see here. We're always receiving new products as the world of technology is constantly changing and developing. We all know that technology is a massive part of our lives. Uh, we, we need to normalise it. We need to normalise our approach to it. So the tech lounge really is absolutely critical to the work that we're going to be doing within the community to, to make people's lives better. So <laughs> there is um, a, a little look there at our, our new promotional video and that will go on to our new adult social care website. And we do have plans um, because obviously during COVID we can't have face to face visits, but we are looking at how we could perhaps um, do some virtual appointments in the tech lounge. So um, watch this space. <laughs> so next slide, please. OK, another pilot that I've been um, used to, uh, well, I've been um, yeah, involved with really is um, the Our Better Day programme. So um, we are doing a pilot of some technology. Um, could I have the next slide, please? Just to say a little bit about this is a transformation program. So we're looking at um, people who are attending day centres um, and who were attending day centres, sorry, and we're looking at perhaps how um, they are not able to do that now. So one of the areas we're looking at is um, how can we use technology to, to meet people's goals and outcomes? So next slide, please. So in our um, actual new pilot that we're going to be doing, we're going to be trialling some perhaps some traditional items such as Samsung tablet and Surface Pro against some new items on the market. And um, you might see a sneak preview of those um, later on in the presentation. Um, next slide, please. A little bit more about the pilot. So it's a three month pilot and we'll be um, asking around 30 people um, to be recommended by our one of our current daycare providers. And these could be people with, all, um, with learning disabilities, dementia, older people. We know that the delivery um, of virtual daycare activities is one thing we're really hoping to test, but we want to see where else we could support individuals with those products. So we might be also looking at um, medication reminders by um, remote video calls so we can see it being taken correctly. Um, maybe some uh, remote care calls for the prompting of tasks, perhaps um, some social isolation that you know people aren't able to connect with their loved ones. Um, sometimes it's it's not just the same having a phone call, visually seeing someone is, is, is much better. And this hopefully might help shape how we look at developments that we're, look, um, we're involved with in terms of sheltered schemes or extra care. And some of the devices, if they're paired with health and wellbeing um, monitoring, that, that could obviously give us some more insight really. Next slide, please. I think once um, we know that a lot of what, what traditional technology does is um, really um, a result of reacting to an incident that's already occurred. So I think the future of, of technology is really looking at prevention. Now we know that sort of obviously we want to, um, if someone has a fall and then um, we use say for instance care lines and fall detectors, we know they're very important but perhaps we need to look at opportunities that um, you know, how did that fall occur in the first place? Could we prevent that? Next slide, please. So we know that falls are the number one reason older people are taken to A&E departments um, in the UK. They're often a symptom of something else, either acute, say a chest infection or a, a UTI, um, or a gradual deterioration, e.g. frailty, medication, reaction, perhaps their balance and mobility is deteriorating. Next slide, please. 
I think the key to avoiding more costly interventions, really, um, and above all, perhaps, you know, uh, hospital admissions is um, key to technology use. And one of um, a company called Armed are looking at how things can be prevented. And they really are looking at, you know, the health and social care landscape is changing. And so I think we need to adapt ways in which we can address this. Um, and we, look, we need to focus more on preventing the need for health and care services. And we need to encourage self-management. Next slide, please. One of the things that Armed look at in terms of fall prevention is um, the user wearing a wrist-worn device and it's combined with um, other measuring tools. So that captures data such as steps. Um, it, can, it can look at inactivity. It can prompt someone to do more. And um, in trials, this technology has identified those warning flags are raised approximately a month before a potential incident. So in that space of time, occupational therapists, district nurses, GPs, family, we can all get in um, early and provide appropriate support before um, that deterioration um, starts and it's too late. Next slide, please. We've got a little clip here about um, armed and their use of this in Cardiff. So we'll watch this hopefully in time. It's only a couple of minutes. A new scheme to help prevent older people suffering falls has been launched by Cardiff Council. It uses software that can detect changes in a person's health and mobility, meaning extra measures can be put in place before any accident happens. Nick Pallet reports. In Wales, falls are the largest cause of serious injury for anyone over the age of 65. And that's something Cynthia Pulsford wanted to avoid. She's lived in this Cardiff house all her life and at the age of 84, doesn't want to go anywhere else. New assistive technology, here in the form of a bracelet device linked to a smartphone, is helping her do just that. Protection is better than cure, isn't it? You know, if, um, if, if we can stop people falling, and that's everybody's dread, I think, um, because we've seen so many friends, once they have fallen, um, and pneumonia sets in or they, they're taken to hospital, um, it can be very, very serious. Research by Cardiff Council found that someone who'd fallen five or six times was 56% more likely to go into residential care within two years. ARMED, which stands for Advanced Risk Modelling for Early Detection, aims to prevent a fall from happening in the first place. What this does is it goes further upstream. We're looking five, ten years into the future, really, and identifying risks before they happen. So managing falls in a proactive and predictive sense. Um, it uses uh, a person's mobility, so steps, um, and also their sleep pattern. Technology isn't the answer, it's the enabler. It's all of the services and the people that you put around the technology to make it successful. Cynthia and her late husband were already signed up to the council's telecare scheme, which allows a user to press a button on a watch or pendant get help in the event of a fall. But this technology, which monitors a whole host of the wearer's data remotely, is far more intelligent. But is it an invasion of privacy? So the ARM solution has been the culmination of five years worth of PhD research into health informatics and frailty. Through the, the work that we've completed so far, um, actually the reverse is true in terms of people finding watching a lot of people actually find uh, comfort in the fact that someone is actually watching to what those risks and concerns actually are. Armed is currently operating as a pilot scheme in Cardiff with money from the Integrated Care Fund. With falls costing the NHS £2.3 billion a year across the UK, supporters of this scheme say anything that reduces them is a sound investment. On to football. <laughs> Thank you. That's brilliant. I think it just goes to show that we really do need to act now um, before things get too late. And other ways of um, preventing um, uh, things, anything happening to that individual could be um, uh, activity monitoring systems. And here's a few here. I mean, we use um, some, uh, we use the Canary Care System and we use the Kamuri Sense Socket um, to monitor people um, in their home to, to see if things are um, deteriorating. We also um, maybe like to see if they're they're sort of having uh, drinks and and making 
um, they're you know carrying out their normal activities. So it's really important to sort of think of these systems perhaps staying in longer term um, that we can then pick up things more early. Next slide, please. Another use of um, sort of prevention is the use of apps in this digital world. Um, health management is very important. Uh, it gives people um, access to health information. It encourages them to monitor their own conditions and it can help them maintain a, a more healthier lifestyle. And it also allows healthcare providers to manage um, people's health as well. So in Dorset, we have access to um, the ORCA app prescribing library. So um, we've uh, we're sort of collaborating with our local CCG on that and um, that's really brilliant use of, of the uh, you know digital age of apps now. Next slide please. We've got um, a couple more minutes and we have um, a couple of slides here or videos, they're very short, around how these the products that we're going to use in our new pilot can help reduce social isolation. Um, so we'll show you these and um, that's probably near the end of the... And here's the ethyl. So just some short clips there, really. And, um, you know, we those two products, we, we're just really excited to be um, trialing with people in their homes. Um, I think that's the real test of a lot of products um, that that users get to um, try them out and to see whether they can make a difference to all sorts of aspects of their life, really. So um, thank you. We've I think we've just sort of gone over a couple minutes. We I don't think we started till about nine oh two. Um, so uh, um, I know we've 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 had some chat in the um, sidebar, and um, uh, really, you know, it's been lovely sort of seeing people's comments. And um, my email's there if anybody would um, like to um, email me anything specific um, and. Um, but obviously it, you may need to leave to go on to the next um, uh, session um, at the festival. But um, thank you so much for, um, you know, sort of joining me today. It's been a bit of a quick session, only half an hour. Could have gone on longer, I know. But um, please do email me any, any questions um, rather than hold everyone up here. Um, I will reply to any anybody that emails me. So thank you ever so much for um for joining today. That's been brilliant. Thank you, Claire. Um, if anyone has got any uh, quick questions, I'm sure uh, Claire can hang on for a couple of minutes. Yeah. 
feel free to take yourselves off off mute. <laughs> Hi, Claire. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes. Oh, yes. I was just looking for the email you mentioned. I can't see it. Oh, Where sorry. It uh, was do right to, at the end. Jump <laughs> to paste it into uh, into the chat. Oh, yes. Thanks very much. That's that's great. Thank you. So I think um, hopefully, um, yeah, we, we've had some, uh, it's been really interesting. Um, you know, we've, we've um, oh, there we are. Lovely. Thank you. <laughs> so um, I hope anyone who's, um, you know, still on the call uh, enjoys the rest of the festival. I don't know whether you're going on to other things today. Um, um, our um, facilitator, Brian, has a very good session coming up. <laughs> Is that tomorrow, <laughs> Brian? I'm doing a bit of advertising for you now. With uh, yes, tomorrow morning. Around tomorrow morning at nine, yeah. um, robotics. So again, another really fascinating and exciting area of, of the use of technology, really. Uh, yes, yeah, we're uh, uh, doing a bit of a double hander with uh, PA Consulting uh, around uh, the, the Robotics in Care Community of Interest group that we've been part of for uh, uh, for just over a year now. So yeah, uh, quite excited about that one. It'll be very good. So thank you, everyone. I um, I will let everyone get on to have a cup of coffee and um, you know join the next sort of sessions that are happening. And um, lovely to see everybody, although not you know virtually or albeit <laughs> yeah and please talk about your experiences uh, using uh, on social media using uh, the uh, future fest hashtag and uh, yeah uh, have a great festival <laughs>